All right, hello everyone. Apparently I cannot sleep at the moment, so I figured I'd do a video where you cannot see me. So, I figured that everyone is reading reviews and reacting to reviews. Of course, you won't be able to see my reactions, but you can hear me. So, And I'm not going to do just one stars. I'm going to do ones that stick out to me of uh, books I've read. Um, books I like, maybe even some I didn't really care for. So let's see what others have to say. So right now on Goodreads, I have Stargirl up. You know, I've talked about Stargirl before. It is, I think some would consider it a young adult, but I, I, I think I consider it more middle grade, especially the length and everything. But, um, it says, a celebration of nonconformity, a tense emotional tale about fleeting, cruel nature of popularity. And the thrill and inspiration of first love, ages 12 plus. So yeah, pretty much middle grade. So I'm not going to go through all the names and everything. I'm just going to read off, you know, some of the reviews. And this person recommended it for anyone who believes life should be magical. Okay, I'm going to say it. Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli is a young adult classic. Maybe even a children's classic, but that's cataloging issues that I'm ill-equipped to discuss. This designation raises the question, what makes a book, any book, a classic? For me, I... God, I hate that you have to click on it. I wish I just had an arrow thing. Uh, for me, it means a book that is timeless. Something you can read years and years after it, was, after it was written, without the book losing its vibrancy. A classic also needs to have memorable writing and characters, which I agree. I, I'm a big character person, which, I, of course, plot is important, but, you know you want to care about the characters and everything. Uh, they pretty much move the plot along. But I think it should be a good balance. But yes, I, I think for a middle grade book, Star Girl is a fantastic read. Um, it's cute. It's... Um, I don't know, it's very early on, so I'm lost for words. But it is a cute book. It's one that, you know, gets young readers to think about things and maybe get them prepared for a little bit more serious books. Let's see what the next person has to say. Very sweet. I had this book lying around and picked it up. To give myself a break from other books, I've been chipping away at for the past month. Um, they go on to say about it being an innocent book, which, yeah, I mean, it's middle grade. Stargirl is the happiest, bravest, most carefree, most nonconformist girl you will ever meet. Yeah, I kind of like the fact that she was nonconforming without kind of... I guess, downing people who maybe follow the crowd a little bit more. Stargirl just wanted to be Stargirl. But there was one that I seen that stuck out to me that uh, wasn't the greatest. For some weird reason, I couldn't put this book down. You should read it. It grabbed my attention and I'm a very picky reader. So I'm not a picky reader, but Honestly, I read this book as an adult, and it did, you know, keep my attention. Okay, so here's a bad review. Recommended for people who want a reason to cut themselves. Like, what the hell, dude? Really? Uh, well, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, but they call themselves Batman, so... If this book were a person, I would kill them. I would kill them in front of their mother and make them swallow their own heart. Let me guess, you don't read contemporary, you don't read young adult, or maybe you do read young adult, but maybe you just don't read contemporary? Or maybe we read contemporary, you don't read it. I don't know. But it sounds like this book 
like this person probably knew this book wasn't going to be for them and they read it anyways unless they read it in school as a class but I don't know it showed a sad message that has been played out over and over again there's a lot of things that have been played out over and over again there's if we had one slasher movie in horror why did we need two or three more we had one fairy tale why did they make up more stories years ago I mean that can be said about anything I mean there's probably a lot worse things to do than star girl okay uh, so let's move on oh my god to a book that I had very, very mixed feelings for, and that is looking for Alaska. So, synopsis, Mudge slash Miles Pudge Halter, his nickname is Pudge, is done with his safe life at home. His whole life has been nothing but one big non-event, and his obsession with famous last words has all, have only made him crave the great perhaps. So basically, this is about a boy named Miles who goes off to boarding school to maybe have a more exciting life. And these have a little bit more of one stars. This is not what I expected to be. I hope to find a book in the style of Star Girl, which I guess subconsciously maybe I did too, because I I really like the Fault in Our Stars, um, and of course like I, I just read the reviews and everything, and I like Star Girl, so you know I liked his writing in Fault in Our Stars and the synopsis of Looking for Alaska. I thought maybe. The character was maybe an older version of like Star Girl. And what did I find? A bunch of teens who try to ease their anxiety and they're not so original voices. So uh, I enjoyed the writing style of that book and I liked the whole philosophy. John Green has a lot of good metaphors and quotes and everything, but I just didn't understand the love for the character of Alaska. Like, she was the only girl who thought deep thoughts and everything out of the whole school. Like, you know. Okay, this one person rated it a little higher. Some people are careless in an adrenaline fueled all caps teen reviewing frenzy. Avoid these people, even though ordinarily they are pretty cool. Okay. I did not cry, but John Green still managed to hit me where it really hurt, and it was awesome. Like, the emotion in the book was good and everything, and the whole questioning about this and that. Like I said, I liked the writing style, and if the character was different, this would have been one of my favorite books. I just didn't like the fact of how hypocritical I found the one character to be. Wow, I must have skipped a bunch of pages or read the Hebrew translation or was having a root canal or something because that was one terrible book. All those awards, what? Such a clumsy story. And even more of the author was heavy-handed and so transparent. Yeah, like I said, I really feel really mixed on that one. I, I do. Because honestly, I should have really enjoyed that book. And I, I just, I didn't. Let's check out my favorite of him so far, which is The Fault in Our Stars.
So, synopsis. Despite the tumor-shrinking medical miracle that has brought her a few years, Hazel has never been anything but terminal, but her final chapter inscribed upon diagnosis. But when a gorgeous plot twist named Augustus Water appears at the Cancer Kids uh, Center, that's where she meets Augustus and everything, and things kind of take off from there. So, reviews. Some person rated it one star. I was reading this one review last night, and honestly, they go on about cyberbullying, which I agree with. You know, you shouldn't bully somebody over a, a disagreement, honestly. I don't support that, like, unless somebody's, like, really being a jerk, but still, I wouldn't call it bullying. Um, I would say have a civil discussion with this person. But the whole thing about The Fault in Our Stars is that kids don't talk this way, and, which, okay, maybe it's a little over the top, but you know what, considering the fact that there's shit like Twilight and stories about girls who... The main goal is nothing but relationships and oh god just like that one book that i read this year um all american girl by meg cabot i was expecting a lot more out of a book about a girl who saves the president but no it was mainly about her whining about how much better she would be for her sister's boyfriend and it's like really really so, you know what, I I'm glad there's people like John Green who's out there, even if it's over the top, writing about young people who are intelligent. And the thing about The Fault in Our Stars is that, yes, they have cancer and everything, and I'm not saying that sickness, any kind of sickness or any kind of tragedy is going to make anyone of any age any more wiser and everything, but, you know, if you take in consideration, maybe some of these people don't have anything really to do because maybe they're sick and they can't get out a lot, you know, maybe they take up reading, maybe literature, you know, is an outlet for them to kind of escape sometimes, and, you know, in the book, Hazel has a favorite book and everything, and, you know, maybe they spend time reading, you know, maybe they improve their vocabulary. I mean, it's not just people who are sick, but anybody, but still, you know, it's possible that a person would use that to kind of, you know, ease things up, um, have a way of expression, etc. It seems silly that I have to say this, but I've seen many negative reviews of this book met with backlash from John's nerd fighters, so I want to make it clear. I like John Green. You'll find plenty who worship him as a god amongst men and many who are highly... That's the rest of the review. Highly critical of him. I fall into neither of those categories, but I do like him and I enjoy watching his videos. I find him funny and I agree with a lot of what he stands for. But I do not particularly like this book. There are plenty of people raving about this book on Goodreads, so I realize I'm a tiny minority. I will admit that I might not have felt the same if I had already subjected myself to numerous cancer books. I guess Cichlid is kind of like its own category like dystopian is now and everything or high fantasy and all that other stuff which i guess it's its own sub category of young adult contemporary now or maybe it's just contemporary I, i'm not sure if there's a lot of uh, adult contemporary with the subject I, I imagine there's a few books because it's something that affects people of all ages the characters are in all are all in one way or another john green they all have his quirkiness his sense of humor um 
And you, you'll find that a lot in his books and everything. Maybe that's something I like. The Fault in Our Stars, in my opinion, would have been far better if John Green had stuck to humor like Andrews did in Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. Um, I'm reading that right now, and so far I'm liking it. But I, I do like the sadness that is in um, The Fault in Our Stars. I do. Uh, I'm a sucker for the sadness. Uh, let's see. Any more good ones? Anything that stands out? Let's go to Paper Towns. I don't think Paper Towns was as memorable as I would have liked it to be, but it was a fun book. So, synopsis. Quentin Jacobson has spent his lifetime loving the magnificent, adventurous Marco Roth, Roth Spiegelman from afar. So basically, one day, his estranged friend, I guess you would call it? No, that's not the right word. Like, they're not friend friends anymore, but, you know. She basically drags him to get revenge off her boyfriend that like cheated on her and then she disappears and Quentin basically gathers his friends to kind of bind Margo. Why so many good ratings for this book? It could have basically be called Looking for Margo or Paper Alaska because it's the same formula. So I mean that can be said for a lot of writers really that you know if you write horror like everyone in your books dies or there's some kind of monster. If you have action, you're like in fighting and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, honestly, a lot of writers have certain formula, formulas they use and certain types of characters and, you know. How many books can you write about unbelievable teenagers secretly loving another, another unbelievable teenager? I don't know if Quentin's an unbelievable teenager. He just seems like a boy in love. Now, the, the thing about Margot is that she honestly does seem unbelievable. And that was kind of the point of the book, is that he really didn't know who she was. He loved her from afar, as it said. And that, you know, it was like... The Margot that he thought she was years ago. And I guess in some ways that's the same way as looking for Alaska, but just in a different way. I, I can see where they are similar. And I'm not saying that, you know, no, you know, any of my favorites are without fault because all books are fiction and even some of the best writers have made mistakes and, you know, they've been called out on it. But, you know, sometimes books, you know, they have good quotes. They make you think. Um, they don't have to be top English literature class. All this other stuff, you know, that might be a good book. You know, they don't have to be taught, like, in the ways that people read classics or Shakespeare, or which would be classics too but you get my point any of the big writers this per this book was a perfect palette cleanser between the dark apocalyptic stuff I have been shoving in my face I have been reading so much dystopian that I forgot there were other options yeah, dystopian became pretty popular and you know I'm still reading it and I like it but it, it is uh nice to get out of the hopelessness that the future might be once in a while for a little fluff. Oh boy, this motherfucking book. Let me talk to you about this book. I hated the guts out of it. I have never given this kind of low rating of a book, and I guess it's time. Like, Twilight exists. Like, I heard a snippet of Fifty Shades of Grey. That was enough. I will tell you that John Green anything is better than that. 
I was pretty disappointed in Paper Towns. I'm a big fan of John Green, but I found this book plotting and boring. I hated the Margot character and thought he was a big whiner. So I don't think I dislike Margot in the way that I disliked Alaska. I think it was... I'm just kind of disappointed that we didn't get to know Margot the way we got to know um, Alaska because honestly Margot seems like she'd be less of a bitch. Oh dear lord I found this book immensely irritating. And I, I do see the similarities to Looking for Alaska. I honestly do. But I, I like this one a lot better because I just like the character better. Let's go to An Abundance of Catherines. Now, there are people that I heard this is their least favorite, but this one was kind of light and fluffy and very contemporary and very short. When it comes to relationships, Colin Singleton's type happens to be girls named Catherine. And so, um, Colin has now been dumped by 19 Catherines. Some were when he was kids and not relationship relationships, but he's been in love with 19 girls named Catherine. Things I was sick of by the end of this book, anagrams and tangents. The use of the words Jufro, Fug, Fugger, Fucking, Kaffir. Colin's whining. Actually, Colin in general. Number four, Catherine's. So, this is basically about a boy, like I said, named Colin who has been dumped and his friend takes him on a road trip to get his mind off his latest Catherine. And, um, yeah, it, it, it's a fun read. I thought it was fun. It may not be the best. I understand why people wouldn't like it, but, yeah. This was by the far the worst experience I had reading a John Green book. I really always enjoy his writing humor, but this one just didn't do it for me. I don't think the book is horrible, but it couldn't hold my attention. Uh, maybe it held my attention because I am more of a character person, and while I do enjoy plot, I, you know, I can read a book that's mainly dialogue. A reenactment of Abundance of Catherine was conceived. John Green sat at his desk quietly con contemplating the ghettoization of scrambled eggs as a breakfast food and brainstorming ideas for his new book. Ghettoization, that's a new one for me. Of eggs. I tried, I really did, believe me, but I can't do it. It's boring. It has no plot whatsoever. I don't like any of the characters. I'm not going to torture myself. Then don't. You know, I, and I don't know these people and everything, and some of it I, I agree with and everything. You know, it could have had more of a plot. But it's just that some people who get really bad when they say a book was boring or this or that, I often notice that they are like Twilight fans. Or something along that line. Colin Singleton is not a vampire or a werewolf or a, a sorcerer or a punning Austin zombie. He doesn't live in a dystopian society. He hasn't slept with his teacher. He doesn't do drugs. His parents aren't divorced. So this person rated like four stars and which I think they're going on is that it's um not everything that's been kind of pushed in our faces lately with the books. That one's in a different language, so I cannot read that. Picture this. You used to be a child prodigy, member of an academic game team. You excelled in school. You were special. You met a girl named Catherine. And started, the two of you started dating. Then she dumps you. 
Then 18 more girls named Catherine dumps you. So this one's a longer review, but they rated it four stars. So again, I think they're talking about the same thing like the last person did. Had I been reading this on paper instead of my computer, I probably would have gone into the fireplace. She was incredibly hot in that popular girl with bleached teeth anorexia. Oh, she, there was, um, I think on the Fault in Our Stars, which I, I just really kind of ticked me off. Uh, this one person... What was it they said that they feel sorry for these middle class white privileged kids? It's like it's a fucking book about kids with cancer. Like, why do you have to bring class or race into it? Like, because they're fucking middle class or white or whatever, that magically things are just going to get better for them, which it fucking doesn't, okay? And I'm not trying to spoil the book or anything, but shit happens. So this one is Turtles All the Way Down. And this is about 16 year old Aza, um, who never intended to pursue mysterious, mystery fugitile billionaire Russell Pickett, but there is a $100,000 $100, reward at stake and her best friend and most fearless, best and most fearless friend Daisy is eager to investigate. So this is basically about them investigating, you know, what happened to their friend's father, and it's about Aza and her anxiety. This person rated two stars. I have been having, this, this one's bigger, I've been having a bad one with YA lately. I've loved it so far that I preserve on remembering, but there are gems and that, that there are treasures. But increasingly, I found myself worried. Have I grown out of it? Even though I just finished this book, I already know that it will stick with me for years to come. I can't fully express how cathartic this book was. I finally saw parts of myself re represented in a novel. So, a big thing that was big about this book was that People claimed it was own voices as uh, John Green has anxiety of the same kind, I believe, as the character. And I really enjoyed it when I first read it. Um, it, it was something different. It, it was, um, it wasn't as romancy, maybe, as The Fault in Our Stars. And it was nice to see, you know, a character going through something like anxiety, something that's not always talked about in books. That she was not perfect, that... You know, but some of the criticisms were that the main character wasn't fully fleshed out and she wasn't too much more than her actual anxiety, which I, I do agree with. Not gonna lie, I'm tempted to flip right back into page one and read the book again. That never happens to me. Like, it is rereadable and everything, but once you start looking at people's reviews, I do see where the book could have been better. This was absolutely excellent and also gave me an ex existential crisis, so thanks for that one. I'm actually floored by how good it was. I mean, I haven't read a new John Green novel in forever, but this was worth the wait. So it really was good. I just wished that there was more to the uh, main character than we got. So, now we're going to start going into my absolute favorite book.
So, synopsis, as you all should know about this book by now. In the nation of Pan Am, a formed, formed from a post-apocalyptic North America is a country consisting a country that consists of a wealthy capital region surrounded by 12 poorer districts. In its history, a rebellion led by a 13th district against the capital resulted in its destruction and the creation of the annual televised event known as the Hunger Games. In punishment, as a reminder of the power and grace of the capital, each district must yield one boy and one girl between the ages of 18 between 12 and 18 through a lottery system to participate in the games. Reaping and her chosen tributes are reaped and forced to fight to the death, leaving only one survivor claiming victory. And it goes on about how she's 16 and volunteers for her sister. This is one of the few books that I gave a review for, and I am the first one. Yay! They have so many memes for this damn uh, book. Here's like a picture of Bram. It's your first year, she said. They're not going to pick you, she said. Yeah, I mean, as sad as the book is, sometimes they do have funny shit in here. A, a lot of memes. Sucked her since I was five. Then I got into contests where I had to kill her. So kids, that was how I met your mother. Did anybody else watch that show? I didn't watch it until it was like almost over. But yeah, I like that show. Uh, recommend it for everyone who hasn't seen For everyone who hasn't. Seriously, read it. My epic book recipe. Checklist. Checklist for this book. A sharp, intelligent heroine with just the right amount of emotion who gives into absolutely nothing and no one. A sweet and sensitive hero who loves and supports a hero unconditionally. Which, yes, yes. Um. So this person rated it two stars. If I were a teenager or recommending this as an adult, two stars, three, teenager, three stars. Plot, it's a potentially exciting but gruesome story, but much of the characters were rather flat. I didn't think that at all. I mean, there's side characters and everything. And honestly, I think, you know, some of the characters were meant to be attached to that we got quite a bit, you know, more of them than some other books. Very good. The literal co corruption of youth by reality television forced the murder, thievery, treachery, and kissing to stay alive. Yeah, everything was about survival, even down to romance in that book, which I loved. Why did I put off reading this for so many years? I remember being extremely popular, but it seems like it, I was in a rut with my reading and figured I would pick them up eventually when I was back on track. Months turned into years, I finally saw the movies, which... Um, suppose pushed them, them even further down my TBR. Which is a real shame because the movies didn't capture quite everything the book had to offer, which they did not. I, I enjoyed the movies, but everything was so toned down. That said, I found myself initially shocked at how much backstory we get into Katniss's family and District 12. That is one thing I did like. I was kind of disappointed by the end of the series in some ways because I wanted more backstory, but I loved how the first book really went into it. I guess I had assumed from the movies that most of those details were just meant to be vague and mysterious. While I found myself still indifferent towards Gail's character at this point in the story, I found myself much more connected and sympathetic towards Peta. I do like Peta a lot more than Gail. Guys, I 100% see why these have been so hyped over the past decade. 
While this is a theme that has been done many times before these books were written, Colin captures something very special and important with her particular novels. Uh, I, I agree, which I'm sure that has come across. <coughs> I love this book. I've said it to a few people that if I wasn't married, I'd have to marry this book. Like, honestly, this is my favorite book and probably going to be my favorite series, but I don't know if I'd marry any book. I read the 400-page arc. Oh, you got an arc. See, I didn't read this book until, like, the second movie was out. I was late to the party, so that's why you hear about it from me more than other people now. Less than 24 hour time period. I, no matter how much I love a book, I just, I don't have the time for that. But I'm so glad other people do. Because I would love to do that. Fantastically written. Oh yeah, compelling, super quick read. Most definitely. Original, um, Shuffle's Feet. So, Battle Royale did come out first. And it has a similar concept, but they are different stories, people. That's in another language. This book is Jesus. Uh, well, that that's an, a high rating. <laughs> so this is what all the fuss is about. This is a fantastic, breathless, and somewhat brutal read. That once you start, you simply can't put down. This is why I love the book. Like, once it opens up, it just draws you into this world. You care about this character. Um, you care about her backstory. Um, you're interested in what's going to happen in this world and how these people are treated. I initially had no idea what this book was about or what an expected to expect in terms of YA, it had just been uh, recommended to me by so many people that I had to find out for myself. Well, let me say I was not disappointed. I have now joined the legions of Suzanne Collin fans and waiting for her next installment. So these are, you know, older reviews. Written along the lines of Stephen King's The Long Walks or Orwell's 1984. Maybe I'm aging myself here. This story feels very original and sucked me in with its modern day survivor-esque retelling. It's the ultimate reality TV suspense, scripted realism, romance, and survival that you should not miss. Yeah, I I'm telling you, for a young adult, this one is really good. So I'm surprised there's not too many negative reviews because usually when a book gets really popular, like, I mean, there are some, but not as many. There's a lot more uh, good ones, which is good because I love the book. So let's do one more. Let's do, I think, for the next video, I'll do um, Battle Royale. But for now, let's go to The Lovely Bones. The Lovely Bones is a story of a family devastated by a gruesome murder, a murder recounted by the teenage victim. Upsetting, you say, remarkable, remarkably first-time novelist Alice Ebel take takes this difficult and difficult material and writes something compelling. So the first one is a one star. The Lovely Bones has got to be the most baffling, poorly written, jaw-droppingly jaw -dropping bad book that I have ever set my eyes on. It is true. I It is truly a black, black tragedy that words in this book were placed in particular order. So this one has a lot more one and two stars. Uh, recommend it for no one really. Greatest first 30 pages ever. 
the worst rest. Hated it. I'm one of those OCD literary nerds who takes the war on bunker mentality books that I've started and disliked. I will see this through the end. I worked at Borders for more than a year, and I worked the boring ass register, usually at night. I leaned there with my chin in my hand, staring at the shelves, actually wishing I could help a customer with their purchases. It's purely insane. But I think that's what happened anytime you place someone in a kind of confinement. Okay, so where is the extra review? I read it in three nights. Seabold's voice is entirely unique. Never seen it before. I think that being allowed into the vision and point of view of another is probably one of the awesomest feelings. So, like, way before I, like, read Unwind or The Hunger Games or anything like that, or any of the books I've read now, I read um, The Lovely Bones, which... I'm not sure, like some classify it as a young adult because it's told from a young adult's point of view, but then there are people who say it's adult because of sub subject matter. I mean, it is a book about a teen who is assaulted and murdered by her neighbor and how her family falls apart, but it is told from first person point of view of this character in the afterlife, and I thought that was a really unique, um, you know, perspective. Because that was a damn satisfying ending. The moment I finished the lovely books, I let out a long, slow, and heavy breath. I strongly believe that if you go into this book thinking it will be creepy and mysterious, um, and I think she goes on to say that, you know, it's different than what you think. Two-dimensional stereotype characters, I didn't think that at all. I thought it was very well written and just tackled it very good um you know things weren't happy throughout the book things didn't get better um it really showed a family falling apart recommend this book for nobody this book has singly single-handedly shown me that i spent too much time skimming and not enough time really reading Great read. Detailed storyline of a tragic death through violence and overcoming it by first acceptance and letting go and also moving on. Which, that is another, and I'm kind of surprised that I have not read any more of her books yet, but they are on my list. After hearing all the hype about this book, I couldn't wait to read it and discover how amazing it was for myself. I was greatly disappointed. So I know there's a lot of people who don't like books like this or people who complain about the backstory and the Hunger Games or, you know, what is it? The kids in the Fault in Our Stars being too intelligent. They're, they're very much fluff readers. If you look into some of their likes, they either have to have romance or a lot of action. They're, they're really not character driven people and you can tell. What a disappointment. I had high hopes with this book. Anyways, the author doesn't owe me anything. I did feel cheated for many hours invested in lovely bones. This book is a mess. Like, looking back on it, I mean, I haven't read it for a couple of years now, but, you know, maybe the writing isn't as perfect and everything, but I really enjoyed this book. It opens up so emotionally. Recommended for people wishing to ponder their views on heaven. I was really disappointed with this book. The first half was easy enough to read. Then I started getting bored. Like I said, you know, this isn't a book of excitement and everything. It's a book of emotion and family and all that and loss. I have no idea how so many people can love such a boring and pointless book. I don't read a lot of juggernaut pop fiction. 
belief with the Da Vinci Code. See, the, I haven't read the Da Vinci Code, so I can't really make the statement. But the thing is that, yeah, like I said, I notice that it, it's always about fast pace and excitement. And sometimes stories are slow burning and they're made to make you think and you're made to stay with these characters and hear their thoughts and everything. And sometimes there there's books that are meant to be faster and exciting. It, you know, it's all different kinds. So anyways, this has gotten way too long now. So I'm sure you're done listening to me talk. So I will do a part two of this maybe tomorrow. So see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.